So just in terms of understanding um, uh, who Tintry is, so we were founded in 2008. Uh, I founded the company with Mark Ritter, who we'll be talking uh, later. And um, today we're up to uh, over 1,000 customers worldwide. And um, we have over 500 people um, that are worldwide as well. So what I'm going to be talking about here is I'm going to be giving a, an overview of the sort of the baseline technology of what we do, um, which is VM aware storage, uh, which is storage specifically for virtualized environments and the cloud, which some of you may be familiar with, but I want to go into uh, the foundational technology as well. We'll be showing you a lot of new stuff. Uh, and um, we'll also be talking about something. We actually did our, a huge product launch last week, uh, the biggest product launch in our history um, of something called Scale Out uh, uh, for virtualized environments and the cloud. And we'll be going into detail on that as well. So the first thing I wanted to do was um, just look at the problem that we're actually solving. Okay, And some of you are probably very familiar with this. But this is the fundamental problem that was introduced by virtualization um, for storage. So what you see on the left-hand side is the world as it existed before um, virtualization, so the physical data center. And what you had was a, a very simple relationship between the applications and the storage that was being used by applications. So you could refer to something as the, uh, you know, the SAP lawn, the exchange volume, and you could very easily see the storage that was being used um, by specific applications. The middle panel shows what happened with virtualization, um, which started back in 2001. And obviously, at this stage, uh, you know, lots, over 75% of workloads are being virtualized. And fundamentally, um, virtualization broke storage, okay? And what it did was it allowed you to share compute, um, but it also required that you, um, you share lungs and volumes as well, okay? And that's the fundamental issue. That's the thing that's been out there um, since 2001. Uh, and that causes a lot of problems for performance. It causes a lot of problems for um, visibility. Um, and it causes a lot of problems for replication as well. So that's the fundamental way in which storage was broken by virtualization. Um, the solution to that um, is uh, VMware storage, which is what we do and which is what is the foundation um, of all the technology, the new technologies that you'll see today. And what we've done is We've restored the simple relationship between storage and the applications um, that are using the storage. So the storage natively understands not lungs and volumes. It understands virtual machines and virtual disks. And we do this in a way that is um, hypervisor neutral. So we support uh, VMware, Hi uh, Hyper-V, OpenStack, um, uh, Red Hat Enterprise virtualizations, and server. Uh, and we do that in a way that um, works across multiple different workloads. And I'll, again, I'll go into a little bit more detail about the fundamentals of this VMware storage. So the new stuff that we show you today is all built on this foundation of VMware storage. And what we would say, and we, you'll see this from what we show you, the new stuff, is that you cannot build this kind of functionality specifically on the, the scale out side and on analytics um, without having this foundation of VM aware storage. So that's the, the foundational technology, um, which is why we go into a bit more detail as to what it is. So the audience here is probably very familiar with this kind of concept. Um, it's become, you know, VMware has acknowledged that this is important using, uh, you know, something like VVols, which has tried to do the same thing. Uh, and, um, you know, that notion that it's important that storage be specific to virtualized environments, I won't say is completely accepted, um, but it's certainly something that, that people see the, the benefit from. And that's the foundation of what we do. Um, so again, if you look at what VM-aware storage means, um, it means that everything is done at the VM level. Um, so uh, we support VM quality of service, um, which we will show you today. Um, we are the only storage vendor to be able to support um, VM uh, quality of service at the array side. 
We also um, will show you analytics. So we have always on analytics, real-time analytics that we've had since the, the product was first introduced. Um, and so this isn't something that you have to turn on. Um, it's something that's available on every single VM. And Justin will be showing that later. Um, data management is all defined at the VM level. So uh, snapshotting, cloning, replication is all defined at the, uh, the VM level. Uh, so rather than replicating uh, LUNs or volumes, instead you're replicating um, VMs. And again, uh, we are the only storage vendor that actually, array vendor that supports this functionality. Um, we, we also, everything is available um, via APIs. Um, so the, all the functionality that you see today with the UI um, is available via REST-based APIs, available via PowerShell as well. And we'll, we'll also briefly mention, we won't show it, um, we have deep integration with VMware uh, and you know, into the, the vCenter uh, UI as well as into uh, vRealize operations. So it's, not some, it's something that could be integrated well into uh, third-party environments. Uh, and again, to emphasize, it's all multi-hypervisor. So you can um, have coexistence of VMware VMs, Hyper-V VMs, OpenStack VMs, all on the same system. And uh, there's, you know, the same functionality is largely available across multiple hypervisors. Okay, so this is an important one. Um, and this is probably one of the things that uh, customers get the most benefit from when they actually run our products. Um, and this is fundamentally around the notion of isolation of applications. So what you see on the left-hand side is what happens when you uh, are running on traditional storage. <coughs> so you have IOs that are coming from different VMs that are shown using the different shapes here. And you can have, if in effect, a, a traffic jam of IO. Okay, you have interference of IO that's coming from different VMs. And that can cause um, latency issues. So for example, if you had a high throughput application that happened to be sitting on the same LUN or volume, as something that was latency sensitive. Um, it's like, again, a, a traffic jam when you're, when you're on the freeway, uh, where you get stuck behind um, you know, a, <clears throat> somebody who's ahead of you. Uh, and what you actually want uh, is what's shown on the right-hand side, which is you want separate lanes uh, for each application that's running on the system. And that's essentially what we provide, OK? This is all built into the system. So each, um, each in, uh, virtual machine, each virtual disk, in fact, gets its own lane. Uh, it has its own queues associated with the virtual machine, a uh, virtual disk. And that means that <clears throat> you do not get interference between virtual machines that are running on the same system. So you can have thousands of VMs that are running in the same environment. And this means that, again, you can easily scale the system by adding um, multiple different applications, uh, and you don't have to do a lot of performance tuning. So this is the built-in, you don't need to do anything, it's all auto-tuned, has been there since the, the start of the release of our, of our product. And again, this is probably one of the biggest benefits that people get uh, in terms of deploying large-scale environments using Tintry. Um, something that we are going to show you um, is uh, quality of service. Uh, and this is something that we introduced last year. Uh, so again, if you want to set specific limits on particular virtual machines, you can specify minimum and maximum IOPS associated with those virtual machines. And we'll show you um, how, that, uh, how you can use that. Uh, this is something that was actually driven by our service provider customers. Uh, who wanted to be, you know, be able to specify minimums and maximums associated with each uh, virtual machine or uh, you know, to have categories of virtual machines that had different quality of service. So incredibly easy to use, um, but also something that for most customers, they won't set these quality of service explicitly. The difference here is that what we do is quality of service at a VM level. There are other mechanisms out there that do it at a volume level. Um, everything within our environment is at the VM level. Okay, so the other thing which you'll see again within the demo has been there since the start of uh, you know, the, the release of our products is 
analytics on all the time. If you want to be able to find out a latency problem, uh, you want to be able to go from uh, the, uh, you know, determining whether the problem was on the host, the network, the storage, you can get end-to-end -end latency on every single virtual machine that's running in the environment. Always on, um, and you, within seconds you can actually diagnose problems. Uh, and we can only, we can do this <coughs> because we understand the I.O. that's associated with each individual virtual machine. And there are, you know, again, large numbers of virtual machines on the systems. Um, our larger systems today support up to 5,000 virtual machines, and those, of course, could have, you know, many virtual disks associated with them as well. So again, this is, we were able to do this because we have a, a file system that's designed explicitly for virtual machines. Okay, the, the next thing is replication, uh, and this has been there for a few years. Uh, we support VM level replication. Um, so rather than replicating at a lawn or volume level, uh, we allow you to replicate uh, at the individual virtual machine level. So the benefits of this are you can have different policies associated with different virtual machines. You can change them. You don't have to base replication on uh, you know, whichever lawn you're sharing uh, you know, for performance reasons or for whatever administrative reasons. Instead, you can go right down to the individual virtual machine, uh, and um, that's more flexible, it's easier to use, and it's also something that is more efficient. Um, what we actually see with our customers is that, in many cases, they're replicating 10, you know, 5, 15% of their VMs, and so they're sending less data um, over the network um, because they're not simply replicating data because it haps happens to be sitting in the same lawn or volume. Um, we're also deduping and compressing that as it goes over the wire. And what we've seen is that for many customers, uh, you know, where they would have used WAN acceleration products with replication, because there's a lot of stuff going over the network, they don't need to do that when they're using our replication. Uh, and this is also something that can be, um, you know, deployed by somebody that doesn't really know uh, very much about storage. You can change the replication policy uh, very easily as well. So again, we can do this because we support um, VM-aware storage. Uh, the final thing I wanted to mention in terms of um, is the deep of the current functionality is deep hypervisor integration. Um, because we operate at the the VM level, uh, we are able to uh, you know integrate very well into VMware environments. Uh, I will claim that we have the the best plugin out there um, for VMware uh, in terms of the functionality that we're able to, to provide in terms of doing things like cloning, snapshotting, uh, as well as pr uh, taking a look at the, uh, you know, the analytics that are uh, on, on each individual, real-time analytics on each individual VM. And we also have a, um, you know, a very strong integration into vRealize Operations Manager. We're doing the same kinds of things for Hyper-V, uh, and um, we're also moving it to the orchestration layer uh, for VMware as well. Okay, so we're able to do this because of the VMware storage that we support. Okay, the new stuff, okay? So um, these are things that were announced for the first time last week, okay? So we did a launch last week. And um, so what you're seeing today are things that were only shown um, either as part of press briefings for that launch um, or uh, last week. So it's new stuff. You're going to see demos of the new functionality that we introduced. So the big thing that we did was we, we introduced a scale-out platform, okay? And the model that we use for scale-out is specifically designed for virtual machines, okay? It's similar in philosophy <coughs> to the way that DRS is used for scaling compute, okay? So the model is that you have a set of, um, set of arrays that can be combined together, and um, they are, uh, there is a uh, piece of functionality, which we'll, we'll show later, uh, the scale-out software, which actually makes decisions about optimization of <clears throat> the workloads across the different systems, okay? 
So the model, again, is similar to what uh, storage DRS attempted to do. Um, but I guess I would say that it, we were able to do things right because we're, we have statistics on what's happening at the VM level. Um, but we also do things like retaining policies when we move uh, virtual machines around. Okay? So you'll see it in the demo. But this is something that um, allows you to take a system of up to 32 nodes and actually, uh, you know, which is about 160,000 VMs, and build an environment that is that kind of large. Okay? So you'll see it, ask questions when, when you actually see this environment. We also introduced uh, new hardware models. Um, you can see one of the models here, 2U systems. Uh, that go from 17 terabytes up to 308 uh, terabytes effective. Um, these are all flash-based systems. Uh, and we have a, I'll quickly go through the, the models that, that we have there. So we introduced uh, these uh, new hardware models. We also introduced analytics, uh, which is predictive analytics. Uh, so different from the real-time <coughs> analytics that we have had in the product since the, the very earliest days. And we'll give you a, a demo of that as well. So three components of the environment. One is the, um, you know, the base platform, hardware platform. The other one is the scale-out software. Uh, and then the third one is the, uh, is the predictive analytics, um, which we will show you as well. And so the benefits of this are you can go from a really small environment, so from a 17 terabyte environment, <laughs> right up to a 10 petabyte environment, okay? And you can also do this in a way that is, where it's incredibly easy to manage, where we would say that there's less than one person that's actually required to manage even the largest environment, okay? So scalability that we believe is larger um, than anything else that's out there for supporting virtual machines, okay? So for supporting uh, data center environments running virtual machines. Okay, so we'll talk about this a bit later. Um, this is, uh, Mark's going to talk about this, which is the, the scale out, uh, the ability to combine the uh, number of systems together, and then to be able to automatically uh, optimize the distribution of VMs across those environments. Uh, and, and you do that yep. through like storage vMotion kinds of things? We do, yeah, we do it using storage vMotion or the equivalent um, live. Uh, migration yeah. uh, using Hyper-V. Uh, analytics, uh, I'm, Brandon's going to show you this, uh, something that allows you to take long-term uh, analytics on individual VMs uh, and do some really interesting things with them. And again, we're only able to do this because we're built on this VMware foundation. Okay. So I just wanted to finally mention these are the hardware platforms that we have ranging from 17 terabytes up to 308 terabytes. One of the things that I, would, that I will claim from this is that um, with the introduction of new high density SSDs, um, the, it, we believe this makes expansion shelves obsolete, okay? And if you look at this, we're using four terabyte SSDs in the current systems. Um, if you get up to uh, you know, 16 terabytes, 32 terabytes uh, SSDs, which are coming in the, the near future, um, then you're going to be able to get enormous capacities um, in a single head, right? So we believe that the model of scale up, traditional scale up, um, is just inappropriate for this world where you have these very high density SSDs, 